and, uh, and that uh, through that trial, we will be able to um, put one platform on trial, put one practice on trial, draw attention to it. Um, unfortunately, the Bush administration said, well, I'm just going to give you guys a pass on that one. So, um, so we had to kind of uh, put our work together and, uh, and uh, decide that we were going to stay focused on this issue. Um, and that we would focus on the American people, right? And American people who are comfortable uh, with torture. Right? And the 330 million Americans, uh, very few of them think on a daily basis, my government is uh, torturing people right now. Um, so uh, since that time, we've uh, held demonstrations, we've uh, done walks, we've fasted. Um, we've uh, every year gone to Washington and done uh, actions to try, to try and draw attention to this. Um, trying to educate uh, people about the real meaning of the war on terror, which uh, seems to be to foment more fear, uh, to create more terror, and to waste billions of dollars. Uh, also trying to tell the stories of the men uh, still at Guantanamo, still at Bagram, uh, and other detention facilities in Afghanistan and in Iraq. Um, and then sort of using a very kind of different part of my brain, I've also been, uh, uh, spend a lot of time uh, thinking and working on the military industrial Right, the, the heft uh, of uh, weaponry, the hypocrisy of politics. Uh, this year, the United States will spend uh, $670 billion on the military. Um, the United States will not be safer as a result. Lockheed Martin, Boeing, Raytheon, the other weapons manufacturers will celebrate. Um, their stockholders will go home happy. Um, but the budgets for housing, for health care, for education in the United States will uh, it seems to me that there's an odd symmetry between these very different forms of, of torture and abuse uh, perpetrated by my government. Uh, there's the Byzantine and the brutal, uh, but very intimate uh, form of torture, uh, where a person hurts person, where a person maims person. Uh, and then there's this uh, very antiseptic, very kind of detached, uh, distant uh, form of violence where machinery is finely calibrated, uh, the language is coded, right? You saw the names of all the weapons that are tested at NEAT, uh, the Sidewinder missile, the AMRAM, the JDAM, right? Like these words mean nothing, right? They're just kind of uh, parts of the alphabet uh, instead of being uh, weapons that are designed uh, to, uh, to blow bodies apart, to destroy people's homes. Um, and that we can be so distant, right? That somebody can sit in New York State, New York, somebody can sit in New Mexico in a trailer and watch images on a screen and push buttons on a keyboard and half a world away, a uh, group of people disintegrate, right? They explode, uh, they are made into little bits. Um, the people pushing the buttons in uh, New Mexico or upstate New York don't know the names of the people, they don't know what languages they speak, uh, in some cases, in that border region between Afghanistan and Pakistan, they don't even know what country uh, they're firing on, right? And they don't want to know. They don't need to know, right? The target has been eliminated, and that's it, right? Uh, so there's this bloody intimacy of torture. There's this antiseptic distance of modern warfare. Um, and they coexist comfortably, right? They coexist comfortably. They must be exposed and resisted as two sides of the same coin. Uh, the coin of empire, right? the coin of exceptionalism, uh, the coin that says that there are no other coins, there is no other money uh, for anything else uh, but these things. Uh, it seems really overwhelming to hold in the same two arms uh, uh, torture on the one hand, uh, the bodies broken uh, by other people, and then uh, with the other arm uh, to take in the whole of the military industrial whole of the, the testing and the perfecting that is happening at NEAT and in so many other places around the world. It seems too much uh, to hold those two things. Um, and yet that's, that's what we must do, right? That's what all of us, each of us, uh, and all of us together uh, are doing. Uh, in my country, in the United States, uh, our whole system asserts that to be uh, human is to be feeble and weak. Uh, to be poor is to be criminal. Um, to be to have any sort of feelings, to have any sort of uh, conscience and heart is, is to be weak. 
um, and that principles can be bought and sold. Um, and, and for quite a, a cheap price, principles can be bought and sold. Um, but I think that uh, the organization that I'm a part of, the War Resisters League, which is part of War Resisters International and OPA and so many of these other organizations that are uh, part of the same family, right, recognizes uh, that all we have, all we have are our principles, all we have are the actions that we create together, um, all we have is one another. And then asserts uh, boldly revolutionary, uh, revolutionarily, revolutionarily, um, and, and very counterculturally that those three things are enough, right? That we don't need anything but our principles, our actions, uh, and one another. With these tools, we can confront and resist and even transform um, a system that is so brutal and so total that it encompasses uh, the waterboarding of a man um, in an inter uh, intercontinental ballistic missile. Um, so war starts here um, and it ends here.